Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. This video, or unboxing, is brought to you by Reddit user Magdumber. Magdumber, thank you very much. He reached out to me a couple weeks ago with a couple things that he was looking to sell and offered me whatever I wanted to review, to which I was very grateful and appreciative for because I never thought I'd get my hands on a Steiner prism like this. So, Magdumber, thank you very much for sending this in. What we have is actually a bit of a mystery because is it one or the other or both? Well, I'll tell you, this box isn't big enough for both of them. And if that's not telling you something, I don't know what is. Anyway, the box is typical Steiner. It is beautiful. It is well illustrated. It gives you all the key information on the side. And it's just a really nice box. Nothing out of the ordinary. We pop the top. We find ourselves a fairly beat up instruction manual. But it's very straightforward and easy to figure out. Primarily because this is a prism. And there isn't that much information going on with a prism. Put that off to the side. And then we come to this. This thing is gigantic. I was not expecting this thing to be as big as it is. Inside, we have some shorter screws because there is, as you can see, a spacer down there, which we'll talk about more in depth. And that's basically it. You get cleaning wipe and that's that. So this thing you could literally use to bash someone over the skull with if you run out of bullets in your gun. You might not be looking for that, but if you are, you got it. Despite the fact this thing is, is a lot bigger than I was expecting, it's actually a little bit shorter than an ACOG 4 to by 32 TA31. About an inch shorter, which is a lot. But unlike an ACOG, this thing weighs a little bit more. And when I mean a little bit more, I mean about 10 ounces more. Because a TA31 comes in at about 17 ounces, where this thing comes in just shy of 28. Granted, this thing does have some nice features like flip-up caps, which are easily removable, but all in all, this thing is significantly heavier. In fact, you can get an LPVO combination for much less weight than this thing as a whole. But if we're taking that information and that information only, you are overlooking what this whole thing's purpose is. Because this thing is as big as it is to have an awesome field of view. And if we're going to compare it with the TA31, which is the direct competitor to this thing, you will understand it completely. Because the field of view at 100 yards for the TA31 is just shy of 37 foot, where this thing is just over 42 foot. And 6 feet at 100 yards is a lot. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. You have a built-in mount with two pick rail locks right there and two fairly large screws right there. It does have a spacer, so you, you can adjust this thing higher or lower. This is currently at its highest with the two spacers in there. You can remove both of those and shorten it up, which would reduce the weight, but only by a few tenths of an ounce, I would imagine. From there, we're going to move our way to the back where this very large diameter eyepiece can be uncovered like so and admired because this thing is gigantic. The only thing I really have to give you some sort of comparison is my Razer HD 3 to 18 to give you an idea of just how big this thing is. Look at the size difference in the glass. It's absolutely monumental. And that's pivotal in giving you a gigantic field of view out of this thing. The fast focus eyepiece is incredibly smooth and the threads are so fine it doesn't even look like it's moving but it is so if you're looking for the absolute pinnacle of sharpness for your reticle this thing will will offer to you in spades illumination on the side as you can see is a rotary dial where we have it's a little it's a little tricky to move we start with our night vision mode then night one night two and then from one to five being its maximum brightness with offs in between. The dial itself feels okay, a little mushy, but once it gets into play, it's gonna stay there. I don't really foresee this being much of an issue, but if you are trying to turn this thing fairly quickly, it's it might give you a little bit of difficulty with clearing your thumb. So just something to think about. Removing the battery compartment cover reveals a very large O-ring on the cap as well as a standard CR2032 battery. And if we pull out the battery, you will see that we have a very nice battery compartment. These little fingers on the side are pretty typical on most higher end stuff. And 
It's absolutely perfect. You've got a big pad in the middle with those three little dimples. It makes positive contact with the battery. And you have a big rubber pad on the back of this cover, which is going to put positive pressure on this battery to the point where you're not going to have to worry about it moving anywhere. From there, we move to the front where we have our flip-up cap, which we can very easily open, as you can see. And you can see the massive front glass to this thing. It is really, really big. They say it's a 32, and I, I'm not doubting that whatsoever. Another cool thing is you have all these side accessory rails, which is just so happens to be where this, if I can get it out without dropping it, there we go, this front cap is actually clipped into. So you can move it all the way around this thing wherever you choose to have it out of the way. Speaking of out of the way, I will leave it there for the rest of this video. Like this, it does seem to have slimmed down a little bit, but it's still a very large piece of glass. Anyway, on to the elevation cap, which you, as you can see, is tethered in there, so you don't have to worry about it. The, actually, the caps are tethered to themselves. So if you do want to remove these completely, which I don't know why you would, you can easily remove the rail and then pull these out. But with that out of the way, without scratching anything, come on. You are left with a fairly simple and basic turret. It just has up on it with arrows and some little hash marks there at the bottom. But there isn't a whole lot of information other than that as far as what everything is as far as adjustability goes. You have to check that in the book, and I'm not going to read those. Anyway. There is some mush to the turret, as you can see. But once you hit that wall, the clicks are very crisp and direct. You very audible click, and you could feel the click through the turret, which is nice. Uncapping the windage turret reveals basically the exact same turret, but instead of up, it says R, which means for right, clearly. But again, we have very little to no information on it. You can see how much play there is. But once you're in it, you're in it. And again, the clicks sound very good and feel very good through the turret. That's perfectly fine for these. There is enough resistance here that I'm not worried about this thing popping in and out. And uh, that's good because I think the original design for this was military based before coming out to the civilian market. This would be great on a light machine gun, something that you can easily get behind. You get a wide field of view at 100 yards while you're behind a light machine gun, just providing cover fire. And for a light machine gun, you're not overly concerned about size or weight because it's a machine gun. And if you think about all that, this all makes sense as to why this is the way it is. Because the ACOGs are set up more for lightweight carbines, whereas this is going to be set up for more of a lightweight machine gun. You can see how the two rolls differ. Anyway, let's get behind this thing and see if we can notice that massive field of view. Now, unfortunately, because this is a fixed prism with a fixed mount, there's no way to get the fine tune adjustability between the front of my camera and the back of the optic. So you do see a little bit more of the scope body here than you would normally see. Illumination on this thing is actually kind of disappointing. It's very reminiscent of the military one to five LPVO that I have from Steiner, whereas you can notice it, but it's not really aim point bright. It's just there. But again, for this role, I think it's okay but I would like to see this thing be a little bit brighter given the price. But that's not why we're here. We're here for this, the absolute massive field of view. It's a little hard to understand it unless I put it side by side with something which will be happening during the final review, but just look at how wide that is and how sharp and clear everything is, even from 30 yards out to 800. This thing is incredible in that regard. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. That's all for this unboxing. Thank you very much for watching. And Meg Dumper, thank you very much for sending this in for review. As always, see you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.